we're all about to go out to eat. Yeah. You I know? just want yes. some boozy choma. Uh huh. Boozy nyama or boozy choma? Boozy choma. Oh, you, okay. You said it right, good. You said it right. Yeah. My Swahili is on point now, yeah? Okay. <laughs> so you're a pro basically now. Yeah, Habari. Oh. I'm in the mood for cuckoo. Cuckoo. And I've been craving chapati. I feel like I want some chapati. Chapati? Hey, let's do it. Lots of chapati. Yeah. Lots of chapati. Yeah, lots of chapati. That's like my thing right now. You know, like meat is cheaper in Tanzania and Kenya. Really? Yeah. Fine. Yeah. If you go to Ghana, meat is so expensive. So when I come to this part of the world, I just want to enjoy myself. Yeah. Even when you, even when you eat like um, in Kenya, mm -hmm. when you eat like. Local, local is still more expensive. Yeah. Oh, wow. In Kenya is not that expensive. Meat is not that expensive. Like Ghana. See? Yeah. Can you, oh, like can Ghana. You do that? Thank you. Yeah. Like Ghana. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. It's really heavy. Yeah. Are you sure you're gonna be? <laughs> like Ghana. Oh, you you, you joined the scene. Join. Join the scene. Join the guys. I'm yeah. so happy to go eat. Like yeah. that's my favorite thing in the world. It's yeah, really my favorite thing in the world. Napen, napenda kulala. Have you? Oh, uh, Mimi P. Uh, have, <laughs> <laughs> have you found hey, that like a hey. lot of Tanzanian and Kenyan dishes are similar? Very similar. Very similar. Very similar. Yeah, very similar. Okay, that's great. Yeah, very it's like similar. the same, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The same. I feel like y'all are the same people, but just they little different. Like brothers and sisters. Yes. Yeah. Brothers yes, and sisters yeah. definitely. Cousins. Y'all good. Brothers and sisters. 100 people. I don't know how I'm gonna handle the pili pili in Ghana because I heard you guys eat a lot of spicy food. They go hard. And I cannot handle spice. Like, I could barely handle like pepper. So right now, as I'm talking to you, I feel like going home <laughs> because I'm tired already. <laughs> that anytime I, I, I buy food, I need to ask for Philippine. Yeah. I really want Philippine inside my bike, man. But is the Philippine here mm -hmm. at your expectation? It's just that we add more Filipino to our food. Right. But here, zero. That's why I feel like I would love Ghana because when I tell you I live for spicy food, I'm surprised oh, I don't have all the knock on wood. Yeah, knock on wood, <laughs> not I won't. Fast. I'm not gonna manifest that into my life because I love Pili Pili so much. <laughs> everyone peace and light is traveling sister if this is your first time joining the channel then welcome if not welcome back family i am honored to be here today hey. with the brother wode maya i am maya thank you so much for having me you she's an welcome. inspiration by the way i just want to say that um she actually inspired me to start what i'm doing so mm. a big shout out to you man. yo that's so powerful and profound thank you so yeah. much 
And first of all, if you guys aren't subscribed to this brother right here, please go ahead and subscribe. I, I'm gonna have all his links in the description section. Welcome. He just hit one million. Hi. And, and she's the first person to interview me after one million. Hey, I, I ah. yo, that's that's a big one thing. <laughs> that's a big thing, yo. What a milestone, yeah. like. So I just want to ask you a couple questions. Yeah. You are here in Tanzania. How many yeah. times have you been here? Oh, this is my second time in Tanzania. Okay, so um, I was here when I had 100k and um, I'm back again. Whoa, yeah, whoa, that is, um, in 2018. Oh my goodness, I feel like I was just that time flies exactly. for exactly. Time exactly. flies. Oh my yeah. goodness. So, what did you do in T Tanzania this time? This time around, I wanted to um summit Kilimanjaro because three years ago when I came to um, Tanzania, I told myself that if I'm reaching a million. I need to climb Kilimanjaro. Oh man, so, that's awesome. Um, when the channel was close to a million, I decided to come back here again. And it wasn't easy, you know, summiting Kilimanjaro. How, like, how was that whole experience? It in was general? tough. At the end of the day, I even had to cry, you know. Like, that's the amazing. last day to the summit, I, I had to cry. I couldn't walk anymore. I couldn't feel my legs. And they said, we have limited time, but I have to do it. So, okay, like, I want to ask you about these tears, <laughs> okay? <laughs> like, was it? Because I've, I've heard of people crying as mm, well, like, yeah. and it's on my bucket list. It's, it's something I have to do before I leave this earth. I feel like a connection to Kilimanjaro. But anyways, like, was you crying because you were just exhausted, like, tired, or was it like, um, where did it come from? Is it like, the last day of the summit, we had to walk, um, not to walk in, like, climbing for nine good hours. Yeah, we climbing, climbing, not we, walking, not like walking. We we're, we're, were literally hiking up. Like it was a steep um, kind of like um, wall that you climbing up. Ooh, and after nine hours, I couldn't feel my legs anymore. But we we're actually one hour away from the summit. So they told us to take a break, um, mm -hmm. lunch break, eat, and then get ready for the last summit. And I was like, you know what, I can't do this anymore. So literally, I couldn't move, and it snowed that oh day, gosh. and. The waters had to hold me slowly, slowly till I got to the top. Oh my goodness. So did you train for this at all? Two weeks, which was not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I really wanted to, I mean, celebrate this milestone out there. So I had to just go with the flow. Whether they like yeah. it or not, I had to do it. So yeah. that's why I had to come. But I'll say that if you ever want to summit Kilimanjaro, train at least one year, man. Because it's a lot of work. Man, I feel that. I feel that. It's a lot I'm... of work. Yeah, it's, it's gonna happen one day. So, mm. okay, so what else have you been doing here in Tanzania? Like, what, what else did you do? I, I, apart from Kilimanjaro, mm -hmm. the next person that I met was you. Okay. Because, like, so I told you. you chilling. Okay. Uh, I, no, we just, yeah, after Kilimanjaro, I'm like, you know what, we need to go back to Ghana, but I told my team that we need to meet up with you because I've always wanted to meet you, and all the time, I don't get oh, it. Exact time. So, since I'm here now, let me just do this once and for all before I get out. So right I think on. only two content, Kilimanjaro and um, Travel and Sister. I feel honored <laughs> for real. And and likewise, you know, I've been mm -hmm. following you since you, you know, you came from China and everything. And I want to just kind of go into some questions about that. Like, mm. what motivates you to do what you do for the continent and just for for humankind at this point? Mm. For me, um, I felt like it was my responsibility. Mm. Uh, when I was living in China, people used to look down upon me just because I was coming from Africa. People never mm. see Africa as the place to be. Mm. And I went to the internet just trying to look for content about Africa just to show to my Chinese friends in China, people that don't believe that Africa is a place to be. Mm -hmm. So I started looking for content and Trust me, I was not seeing anything. That's why I came across your video. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I saw people putting pictures together saying that, oh, um, the Africa you don't see, 10 places that you don't see about Africa. Mm -hmm. And I felt like this was not enough. Right, right. right. Sister. I felt like it was not enough. Somebody has to do something. So I told myself, you know what? I don't like complaining. I like solving problems. Right. So if somebody has to solve this problem, it has to be me. Mm -hmm. Even though I was an engineer, I just graduated from school. I just got my first job. I mean, leaving that for YouTube video was kind of crazy. But I knew, like I said, it was my responsibility to solve yeah. that problem. So mm -hmm. I decided to design a project called Africa to the World, telling the African story by an African and also bringing the entire African YouTubers on the continent to do it. Because when I'm coming, I can't do it alone. Right, you can't. So I had to recruit so many 
YouTubers for us to join us together to do what we do. And trust me, it's the best thing I've ever done. Right. In my entire life. And it's not about the subscribers, it's about the people that I meet every day. The people mm -hmm. that tells me that, yo, because of you I'm here, because of you I'm doing this, because of you. That keeps me moving because it's so challenging, it's so tough, it's so expensive to do what I do. Right. And yeah. but people don't even understand. Like yeah. <laughs> recently I saw people saying that, oh we need videos from Congo. This is a situation that I went to Congo, I spent over ten thousand dollars and I didn't know they couldn't even get the content we were looking for. Mm. You get what I mean? But people don't understand. All they want is their content. But right. once again, it's my responsibility to change the narrative of Africa. Not alone, but with people like you right. to start telling people about Africa so that it will inspire them to come back to the continent. Exactly. So we are not giving up any time soon. I know yeah. that's right. I know that's right. It does. It, it has... <clears throat> excuse me. I'm getting over a cold, you guys. So please bear with me if my voice is not audible. But... You know, I, I was just having that conversation where it's like it does present its challenges. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it comes to a point where the drive within you to do this exactly. is coming from a pure place, exactly. not just for, oh, I'm well, on YouTube. Not, but not, it's, not, you're feeling compelled yeah. from a whole other space I, to do this. I mean, like when yeah. you, you meet people and they start crying mm -hmm. of seeing mm -hmm. you. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. going to give you an example. Like mm -hmm. in Arusha today, I went to the bank. And when I'm on my way coming, there was a guy sitting on a motorbike. He just went around because he couldn't believe that that's what am I? Mm -hmm. This guy just came and he said, I don't know how many people have told you this, but don't stop what you do. Isn't because that the best? You're, you're opening our eyes to see what Africa is like. He, he told me a lot of things. I was just there with Trudy and then I, I didn't even know what to do. Mm -hmm. Something like this will never, I mean, get into me. Like, it gets into me to the extent that I have to. I mean, even if I'm tired, I have to pick up my camera and keep moving. Right, right. That is it. Yeah, it's it's challenging, but it comes from a different place. The the motivation, the the drive comes exactly. from a different place. Would you say that this is your passion? What are you passionate about? Let me just ask you that. What are you passionate about? I mean, passion. I'll say I love talking. Yeah, that's mm. my passion. Yeah, but creating videos, it's something that I felt like responsibility and passion combined together. Uh -huh. I love talking, right. but it's my responsibility to promote the continent. Mm -hmm. So I added just the passion of talking that I don't get tired of talking. And then the part that I have to change that narrative, that's I had to go for it. Yes, you right know? on. So that's, that's awesome. Like, so I want to get into another question. How do you feel about the African diaspora returning to Africa? No matter whether it's Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, Tanzania, wherever. How do you feel? I, I, I super I get super excited mm -hmm. to see our brothers and sisters living in diaspora moving to the continent. Believe me, I never knew we have a, something called African diaspora. Mm -hmm. I never knew we have anything called African American. Mm -hmm. I never knew we have any one called Jamaican and stuff like that. I didn't know. Really? Yes. Until when? Until I had a classmate who's an African American, a big shout out to you. I know you still follow me. And there was a day when school, we just went to school and they said we should introduce ourselves. So mm -hmm. I just went there and I'm like, your brother, which country in Africa are you from? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like I, I committed the worst crime ever. He was extremely mad. Mm -hmm. Like for me asking him which country is he from in Africa and he's like, I'm not from Africa. I'm from America. I'm an American. I'm not from fucking Africa. Don't ever. You, everybody, wow. everybody was really? looking at us. He was like that? Everybody was looking at us and I'm like, what did I do? And I asked him, where are you from? It's like, don't even ask me that question again. So after class, mm. and I went to him and told him like, yo, listen, I'm from Ghana, yeah. I told you an African. I didn't know anything about being an African-American or something like that. And he told him that, no, Africa, we don't want, we don't want to have anything to do with Africa. Mm. So don't call me an African. So yeah. if you check my YouTube video, that was my first time doing what Africans think of African Americans wow. and what, what African Americans think of Africans. Mm -hmm. It's because of my classmate. Wow, okay. And that is where I got to know that, oh, we have some tension within us. Yeah, Yeah, for and sure. that is the time that I realized that, you know what, it's also time for us to tell our brothers and sisters that we are one. Exactly. And exactly. For me, 
based on that experience, when I see anyone from the diaspora moving to the continent, I get super excited. Mm -hmm. That's how I started my videos. Even for, for my interviews, I started interviewing the diaspora just because of my classmate. That's beautiful. So when I see Africans in the diaspora moving back here, establishing themselves, living their best life on the continent, I just wish the African government would make things easy for them to what, establish themselves mm -hmm. whenever they come in here. If I ever get a chance to become a president, listen, when you are coming to the continent, you are not paying visa fee, you are not paying, I mean, anything, establishing your, I mean, feel at home. Yeah. As soon as you get here, so far as you are ready to settle, I'll give you a passport. Mm -hmm. I wish the African government will understand that these are our own people and let's start embracing them and right, not making right. things difficult for them because a lot of people are yearning <coughs> to come back home and see the revolution is happening and i believe that very soon we are going to understand each other because i believe it's just misunderstanding oh yeah it's because we've been just ginormously miseducated about exactly. each other and, and pitted against each other on the worst levels and yeah the most exciting one is to see Africans in the diaspora marrying Africans. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's interesting. It's an interesting dynamic. No, no, no. And I, powerful. I, 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 I love to see that. I really love to see that. And you know what? Very soon I might be like a pastor who will be officiating weddings between uh, Africans uh, and African Americans. That would be interesting, y'all. I'm here for that. I really want to do that. Would y'all like to see that? <laughs> Drop a comment. Drop a comment. <laughs> that's a, that, that's how I call the name Pastor Tetema. You know Tetema, right? No. Yeah, he's African. No, the only Tetama I know is oh my my Tetama. That's oh my yes, <laughs> that's the part, Pastor Tetama. That's oh okay. <laughs> that's how I call Pastor among my name, you know. So apart from Mr. Wow. Ghana baby, what am I? You can also call me Pastor Tetama. Uh -huh. So very soon I'm officiating weddings among Africans in, on the continent, Africans in the diaspora. Oh, I wow. just love it like, seeing this happening on the continent. Okay. Yeah. That's so you're serious. Very serious about it. Right on. I'm <laughs> even more here for it. I'm even more here uh, for it. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Man, so would you say, because you've been to how many countries in Africa? 24 now. 24, wow. So would you say that there are more diasporans in West Africa? Or in East Africa? No, I think. Or, yeah. or where? No, no, there are more in West Africa than. And West Africa. I'll say most of them are in Ghana. Mm -hmm. They are in, I can um, see that. Um, so, Ghana. What about the Sierra Gambia? Leone? Oh, Sierra Leone. The Gambia. I don't know anyone in Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. There are people. Okay. There are a lot. There are a lot in Sierra Leone. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So, do you see like a lifestyle difference between the diasporans in East Africa and West Africa? I think uh, when you find yourself in, uh, in the West Africa, it feels like you are in the real Africa. Oh, yeah. so okay. So, so I elaborate. I, 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 I think uh, the diaspora fits in so well mm. in West Africa uh -huh. than in okay. I can see that Eastern Africa because um, sometimes I, I do interviews in both um, Eastern and uh, Western Africa. I mean, mm -hmm. the people from West Africa get so excited that okay. You know, when it comes to East Africa, it's more peaceful. Yeah, they're the more mellow. Yeah, all exactly, around, yeah. they, they they calm down. So, but in the West, no, we don't calm down like that. Ha, I heard. Ha, 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 I, love, I haven't been there, but I've heard. We don't calm down like that. And also, I think uh, when you're coming from Jamaica mm -hmm. and then you get to Ghana, you feel like, oh, this is my home mm -hmm. because we have the same so many stuffs in common. The food we eat, we they have it in Jamaica. That's why I'm actually going to Jamaica to check Ooh, that out myself. Because okay. I've interviewed people who are telling me that, oh, there's no difference between Jamaica and Ghana. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, East Africa is cool. I feel like if you're a diaspora, move it, want to move to Africa, if you need a calm place, you can choose the right, right, Eastern right. Africa. But if you want that harsh life, harsh condition, <laughs> come to the West, man. And, you know, we, you see, I want to tell you something. When you talk of... um. African Americans, mm -hmm. I'll say if you ever want to move to anywhere in Africa, it has to be West Africa. Okay. Because yeah, why is that? You, you have um, the direct ancestral connection. Yeah. Okay. In the West than in the East. More, I would say more so in the West. Yes, but yeah. you know, from what I've from what I've learned out here, mm -hmm. slaves came from all yeah areas, I mean, but to the majority. I mean, 
to see it with your eyes. <coughs> mm -hmm. I mean, unless if you want to go to Kenya, unless you go to for is it for Jesus to witness that. But as soon as you land in West Africa. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you go to Senegal, you see the trade. If you go to Ghana, you see the trade. If you mm -hmm. go to Sierra Leone, you see the trade. Like you see the trade everywhere. If right. you go to Gambia, Kunta Kinte Island, I was there myself. Mm -hmm. You see that okay, this actually existed. Right, right, right. You know, right. but when it comes to East Africa, I don't know where I have to go. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm not saying don't move to East Africa and stuff like that. But um, I would say that Africa is just the same place. But if you really want to connect. Like I, I told um, mm -hmm. the sister in Namibia that whenever I'm in Namibia, I don't feel like I'm in Africa. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've heard because it's very Western. Yeah, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But I, as soon as you get yourself in Nigeria, you see yourself in Ghana, you be like, yo, welcome home. Okay. That's how it is. Okay. Wow. So getting getting to that, um, what is your favorite country in Africa? Wow. That's a tough question. I have two favorite countries. Mm -hmm. Can I mention all of them? Absolutely. So it has to be Namibia and um, Rwanda. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I what like, about Namibia? I like countries that the uh, law works. I like countries that the people obey the rules and regulations mm. of the land. I love countries that you see less corruption. I love countries that you see the system is working. I love countries that whatever you're looking for, you can find. Um, you know, normally we say this is Africa, thinking that it's not possible in Africa, mm -hmm. but some countries are doing it. Right. Some countries are doing it. I was in Namibia, they got the best roads in Africa, and to my surprise, they got a concept of building the best roads in Africa from Ghana. Oh, really? But I'm a Ghanaian. And I can't say that. You're like, was, where is that? Where? <laughs> Why? Because of corruption. Because uh -huh, I, I even uh -huh. got a chance to interview the um, the CEO of um, Roads okay. in Namibia, uh -huh. and the deputy, and they were telling me a lot of stuff, how they've been able to achieve this success. They, wow. I mean, it's the best roads in, in Africa, you know, mm -hmm. but they got a concept from Ghana, but do you think Ghana is, Ghana is using the same concept that Namibia got from them? No. Probably not. Because of corruption. So that's mm -hmm. what I hate countries like that. Um, I love Rwanda. The system works in Rwanda. Whenever you want to start a business in Rwanda, it's easy to, mm -hmm. I mean, establish I yourself. You know, yeah. I, when I was in Rwanda just a um, few months ago, I met an African American couple that um, actually moved to Rwanda because of my um, videos. And they were there just two weeks later, they established their coffee shop business, Man, which is so incredible. Awesome. If all of us have um, easy access to establish whatever we want to establish in Africa, mm -hmm. like that, don't you think the con continent will flourish? Because right. they're creating employment for the people. You know, mm -hmm. which yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's giving back, it's yeah. directly giving back. But um, some countries, like where I'm from, have to pay a lot of money mm -hmm. and even paying a lot of money you need to pass through so many people a whole lot of yeah. issues that is not allowing people to do stuff that they want to do mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so if if you could give any piece of advice to diaspora looking to come here to tanzania or not even to tanzania anywhere to the continent what would it be don't come to africa to look for a job thank you come to Africa to pray. You know, um, don't come to Africa thinking that, oh, I heard Africa is cheap, so I'm just coming to Africa. Again. You just pack your bags and come. Right. Please. See, that's why I'm telling you guys, I'm the guy who's telling you to come, but when you come, it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. The challenges are many. Be prepared. If you're not yeah. prepared, you just come and say, oh, what am I was lying to me? I'm going back to America. Oh, mm. what am I? You said this is not true. No, I, see, yeah, it's not all rosy in here. It's about the mindset. Mm -hmm. Get ready. It's possible in Africa, like I always say. See, sometimes I want to, I do stuff. I also want to do it. I just don't say stuff. Like, I came to Africa with a hundred dollars mm -hmm. when I was in China. Oh, wow. When I was coming, I came with a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And I had to start up businesses and stuff just to prove to people that I said, come to Africa, it's possible. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. So which means I'm not lying to you. So mm -hmm. come with the right mindset and make it happen on the continent. And also when you're coming, please kindly you leave your American mindset over there. I was we, just about we, don't, we don't have, uh, you know, 
I'm sorry to say this. When, no, we really well, when, when, when I was in China, I could just order food in my room and I get it. Mm -hmm. I could just shop for clothes in my room. The next two days, I'll get my clothes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yo, in Africa, you have to go to the market mm -hmm. and go and buy the clothes. Yeah. So leave that mindset for that, that convenient reasons, like things that were so convenient for you in America. When you get here, you're not going to get it. That's why I'm also saying that come and create jobs yeah maybe and that's an opportunity thank you and yeah. that's what people don't understand are you just complaining about yeah, things exactly. that are lacking well, why don't you solve it. entrepreneurial mindset i tell y'all that all the time come up with an entrepreneurial mindset it, it, and create that you can see yeah. something in america as soon as you get here you realize that it does not exist mm, mm -hmm. and then you bring it on board you mm -hmm. bring it on board you make it happen right and that's when you start making money out of it exactly africa yeah. is still developing and we need you all to come and join hands for us to develop the continent. Right. Don't be left out because hmm. in 20 years to come, see, I, sometimes tell I, I, I tell the diaspora that, why are you always complaining about Africa? Mm -hmm. The Chinese are here, the Lebanese are here, the Indians are here, the Indians are the here. everybody else is are here. It, it's only yeah. Africans that stay abroad and say, I'm not going to Africa. When I go to Africa, I'm not going to make it. But hey, I, I've seen, Chinese, I came here with a Chinese man mm -hmm. from China to Africa. And if you see what this guy has done mm -hmm. within a short period of time, mm -hmm. it's incredible. But an African will sit in America, will sit in the UK and say the system is not working in Africa. Mm -hmm. Change that mindset. See, we all know the problems of Africa. Right. How many of you don't know? Me, when I was, the day I was born, I got to know the problem of Africa. <laughs> right. And we've been complaining about the problems of Africa. And that's what I'm telling <laughs> the youth that it's time. We are the future of the continent. Yes. And if we don't start now, change our mindset, change our attitude, and say that it's time for us to solve the problems of Africa, we'll be there. We'll also die. Our kids also can suffer the same way that we suffer. Yeah. So the time is now. Let's join hands. Africans get to understand um, the diaspora moving and stop taking advantage of the diaspora. Um, it's something that mm -hmm. I also want to yeah. say. It. Um, yeah, on. Africans on the continent, mm -hmm. as soon as you start speaking English, they realize that, oh, that's a good meat, you know. Mm -hmm. She's not from here. Let's take advantage of, of him or her. Please stop that. Let's we'll all work together and um, we all hope to see the continent flourish in the future. Right, right. And when you said something that kind of spoke to me a little bit, like, you know, let's join hands. Thank you. You know, as as Africans and African diasporans, you know, how long are we going to piece ourselves off to people who really mean us no good? You know what I'm saying? Who really only look at us as a prophet. They're pimps, really. If you if you look at it in a in a different perspective, how long are we going to allow ourselves as a continent, as a collective, as mm. black people, even mm. even blacks and Africans displaced from Africa right now, mm. how long are we going to allow ourselves to be consistently taken advantage of? You know, it's, it's really time for that paradigm shift to happen. And it's not going to happen for everyone. And um, like I always say, Africa's not for everyone. Just because you're black <laughs> doesn't mean that you belong here. Because a lot of us still have um, a very colonized mindset. A lot of us still um, are self-hating in so many ways that we don't even realize it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Um, and y'all know me. I, I be real. Like, this is not for you. If you have that mindset, don't come. Unless you are willing to change that mindset. Mm -hmm. um, that's all I have to say about that. Okay? But, you know, it was truly an honor in honor do you have any last words for the channel for the diaspora for, for the good people uh, i will tell each and everyone watching this video please can you do me a favor you know that it's by force as i sit here i'm telling you that it's by force for africans to support africans so subscribe yeah. it's free i mean you know no, no one is gonna charge you i mean you watch the videos without subscribing Shame on you. Yeah, uh, no, sorry. Yeah, please kindly subscribe and be part of this awesome right family. On. And um, I'll be back here in Tanzania. I know there are so many diaspora living in here, and I can't yeah. wait to interview each and every one of you. Please, I mean, take it as if what am I was not here, but I was here, and I'll be back. Thank yeah, you. Y'all right <laughs> know what it is, you guys. It's the Boy Maya. Go ahead and support this brother. All his links in the description section below. Love y'all. Peace.